All right, guys, welcome back. Beautiful day here in Latrobe Valley, Victoria, Australia. If you've just joined, we're building a 1916, or I'm building a 1916 Sopwith Camel replica reproduction, aluminium, wood, fabric covered, Rotec 2800 powered. Watch along, enjoy the video. All right, guys, as you can see, taking the other ones off the bottom, I'm just starting to get ready. I've taken the paddles, panels off the top. These uh, struts will come off very soon. The reason I did that, a few people asked, is just to make them scale and they don't look like toothpicks anymore. Um, the real ones were either spruce or uh, maple or something like that, and they're about four inches wide. I've got the full-size plans on the wall over there. Um, oh, sorry, the plans of the real aircraft, of the wooden version. So I'm just trying to do that, just so they don't look too skinny. Um, ailerons are coming off. On the ailerons themselves, I've just gone ahead and I'm making up these plates that'll go around the control horns and these smaller little plates, just to go, that'll slip on there like that. Um, purely a landing for the covering. Because you imagine the covering comes along here with a slit in it, it can just go nowhere. So a little bit of time spent now doing things like this will pay off in the long run. I've polished the edge to scuff it up so the glue can adhere nicely as well. Last night before I went home, not my proudest work, but I just used car body filler to fill this up and now I'll taper it down nicely just to give it some nice flow. I can also build up areas with tape. This will all get sort of wrapped up with tape. Um, I did hit some areas with the angle grinder and yeah, it's just a little bit, did more damage than what it was worth to be honest. Just have to polish a few things up. Apart from that, we're going along nicely. All right, so a bit of change of pace. I've just painted the push rods, painted those yesterday. I've taken the bolt out to paint. I just like to, um, this looks professional when you put the bolt back in now. Seeing paint over bolts, in my opinion, just looks rubbishy for a bit of extra work. So I've got the two of those. I'll unwrap this one. It pays to keep track of left and rights and everything like that, so it should all go back together relatively good. Doesn't necessarily matter on these two push rods, but I put it back the way it came off. We'll bolt, put the bolt back in, torque it up. I'm gonna wrap these up in fish and chip paper and throw them under the bench. Next, next time these bad boys come out is when we'll, uh, we'll be chambering around, I reckon. That's the end result. Just a nice finished part, in my opinion. Looks great. Worth the effort, wrap them up, put them in the, uh, the final fit parts pile. All right, so I did the bog, the car body filler, just rough sanded in now with 80 grit. Um, this will all get masked with tape. So I've got a nice, nice enough for me anyway, a nice transition, which is what I wanted. Um, and we'll build that up and then cover it. So the other ones will go under the bench now, those two. I'm just gonna do the cable exits on the top wing and then we'll pull those ailerons off as well. All right, you can see here, I've just finished that off nicely. Just a little landing, purely for the covering to glue to. Now I can slip the covering, it'll glue to the rib and to this flange, which just floats nowhere. Uh, I'll probably bend it up so I get a positive sort of uh, touch or intersection and then the same same with the control horn just a nice two rivets nice landing uh, it's not even attached on this side but once I tape it all up it'll be fine these are going under the bench now to they're, well they're ready to cover basically now we'll go back to the main wings all right guys next morning Notice I've dropped these flying wires, all the bolts are loose. 
got a trestle ready. Plan is to get a couple of guys to hold the struts. Notice the aileron's off. I'll knock the bolts out, undo the cables. The bottom wing should pivot down. We separate the top wing. I've disconnected the aileron cable. Top wing should pull away and we'll put that on the floor. And I'll take the, the other top wing off, drop both bottom wings probably onto the floor there. And I may have a go at taking the cabane off. So I'm not gonna film too much of that. Uh, I've got three or four guys coming down to help me. Um, so rather than muck around with cameras, unfortunately, guys, you miss out. I'll get back to you when hopefully four wings are on the floor and there's no damage. See how that turns out. All right, a bit of huffing and puffing, but the, the wings have come off with no issue. Top wing there with the struts, left the struts on. Over here, we've got the fuselage, which is good. We've got access to the side now. Can finish the fuselage off. Top center wing, the Zenith Cruiser wing stand came in handy with both the bottom wings. I think it is both bottom wings and the, the other top wing. I'll get to it and pull these struts off now and we'll start covering. Push the cruiser out into the sun, cruiser out a day out to give us some room. All right guys, welcome back. Next morning and it is like Christmas, Christmas 2024. No, it's not actually, it's the middle of May. However, things couldn't have gone better. I'm really happy. Yeah, I've been working at this for a year now to build an aeroplane and then to tear it apart. Um, sort of got the better on me, to be honest. Really worried, I was nervous. I was like a, what did I say yesterday? Like a grasshopper in a chicken house uh, running around. I got it all sorted out. The guys came in, three other guys, uh, four, four guys actually. Um, what did I do? Had the top wing. We basically lowered the lower wing away, held the top wing there, undid the cables, uh, slid the top wing off, then took the bottom wing off the fuselage. And that's where they all lay now. The center section, center wing, uh, really good. It just slid off like, a, like an beach umbrella on all four posts. I'm hoping I'll get it back on the same way. And I've learnt, you know, when this is all covered and painted, I'll put the struts back on. We lift it up like a beach umbrella and all going to plan, it'll slide back on the stubbies, those little stubby tubes. And if you remember back in the kit, these tubes are, are way off with the direction in both fore and aft angle and inboard outboard. Um, other guys have put something in there, headed up and welded it. I think with the kit, they should be spot on. Or, you know, within plus or minus 10 mil, but they're out by quite a way. Um, I got all my holes on centre. I already knew that because I drilled the hole first, if you watch the other videos. Um, so that's all good. I've got to look after my cables, all my cables. I don't want to kink any cables. So we'll get to the fuselage. The fuselage is the next project. However, because I've got parts everywhere, I need to get the wings up off the floor. My Zenith wing rack turned out fantastic for these wings. Um, they sit in there nicely. So I've been down to Bunnings. Now for those who ask, Bunnings in Australia is like your Harbour Freight Home Depot store or Walmart. Well, it's not Walmart. You can't get 20 litre drum of uh, uh, chisels there, but you can get it's a man cave for all your hardware tools. So I'm gonna knock up another one of these frames. I've got enough timber over there. Those frames will come apart. I did keep those in case I wanted to hang whatever. I might keep one just for smaller parts to hang them up. Um, so I can get the wings up off the floor. Why I do that, so I'll build a, build a wood frame 
each wing will come up here onto the bench I guess and I just want to go over my so I'll lock wire the turnbuckles I might just give them a snug up I need to split pin those um, and anything else that I see that needs doing the clevis pins not on that wing but other wings may need to come on or off take the struts off I can put the fairings now back on the struts and I need to clearly mark top and bottom which I have done on here and then they'll be wrapped now with the struts I've got some parts in here I've covered this before so there's a section of the strut I've got my aluminium tape I'll get to that the fairing and then it'll be wrapped which will make it look like wood color color choice I'm not too sure not too fussy covered that before I've got like a there's a walnut I think and some sort of mapley spruce sort of color I think I need in between that like an oil the old oil cricket bat sort of look but it won't be too fussy we'll see how we go as far as covering and painting um, like I said it's like Christmas morning guys I'm drink, drinking from the fire hydrant as they say um, I think I've seen others that cover cover everything and then have a day where you just spray everything you know what will there be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and four ailerons 14 parts if you like um, I can understand how you you know just have a big day and spray all that I think I'm going to break it down and I'll just do one part pretty much at a time I'll get the primer on as soon as I can there's a lot to think about with primer you know a lot to learn one coat two coats three coats four coats I don't know um, and then the final color so it's exciting I get to cover these up now um, the plan is I'll build another thing build another wing rack the wings will go against the side of the, the hanger for now and we'll work on the fuselage empennage and just for my own personal encouragement I'm going to cover from here back and get that painted and finished I went to the to Bunnings I was going to buy some cheap like uh, wheelbarrow wheels to put on the axle I've been carrying here's the axle here I've been carrying the axle around in the car inch and a quarter um, the only wheels I could find sort of suitable that I'd have to machine out the hub were about 60 bucks so I thought to myself I might as well just put the proper wheels on um, I might just use a hose clamp to hold the wheels on at this stage I can't fit them properly because I've got to work out my brake system how I'm going to do brakes if I'm going to do brakes drum brakes disc brakes no brakes so that's where that's at but I'll just put the real wheels on I might even do the bungee just for the sake of it um, but that'll change when we put what is it 100 kilo engine in the front 100 pound whatever it is um 220 pound i think it's 100 kilo uh that'll change the suspension so also i've got to come up with a way on if you remember when i built the wings i tried not to get too much swarf trapped in the ribs but now i have to drill a hole every three inches and two and a half inches in the prop wash in every rib top and bottom a lot of holes, a lot of deburring, a lot of swarf. And I need to sort of come up with some sort of system, some jig to get top dead center on all the ribs. So you can look forward to that one. Bought in my bugle bolts from home, can of WD-40. That's for the, the radial engine that I've been servicing. Oh, I got my aluminum tape. So from 3M, this was about $76, but on eBay, I got it for 36 bucks. It says 3M, so that's good enough for me, even though it was off eBay. Come from Sydney or somewhere. Um, I think that's 50 metres. And I have to do two, four, six, eight, 16 strips about a metre long, so 16 metres roughly. Um, to put the, put the fairings on, I bought some seatbelt material, which are the straps on the wing rack. Uh, more screws and you can't have enough wheels like I've said before I robbed my last ones and put them on the engine over there so some cheap wheels 
will go on the rack. We can move the wings around as required. I think I'll set up, if you followed my cruiser build, I set up the marquee here. This time of year I get condensation from the roof as well, so you don't want a freshly painted wing and one drop of water is going to spoil your day. So I think I'll put up the marquee. It might just be two sides and the roof. And then I can open this door behind me and the hangar door and have a sort of natural draft and it'll stop the overspray going on the cruiser. Um, I'm also using my HVLP turbine compressor. I like that thing. I had a hard time spurting out the epoxy primer and even the two-pack paint. This is water-based. That's what it's designed for, painting cupboards and that sort of thing. So it should be a lot easier with this. Anyway, enough jibber, let's get into it. So I've just taken the struts off. You can see how easy it is now to get the orientation wrong because they're sort of fully symmetrical. So I'll get the fairings back on and clearly mark those. Tidied up the wing. Lockwide my turnbuckles. Split pins, two split pins, front and back, four lockwise. Now the wing is sort of rough cut, ready to go. Um, I've got to build a rack, I guess. We'll get into some woodwork, rearrange some of this stuff and build a rack. Okay, it's woodwork time. So a bit of a mess going on, but we're going to knock up. I pulled apart some wing trestle stands. Got enough timber, very few cuts. Made some gussets. It's going to self-drive or whatever, just drive these straight into the gussets, make 90 degree corners. Copy this one within, you know, 100 mil or so. This one's going to be a bit shorter, purely because of only, that's the length. Got no idea what it is, but that's what the length is going to be. Um, and we'll knock this together. It's worth, it's worth taking a break from the actual aeroplane. This is going to look after my stuff. There's no use doing a nice pretty aeroplane and then punch a hole in it or the wing falls over or something silly. So we'll build a cradle for my baby. Now this is why I keep, pretty much keep all the scraps and everything. I'm using screws. The screws actually came out of the original crate. I've used those several times now. They're like high torque, these little high torque things. Or some are. Um, and now I'm just putting the screws on into the wheels. We'll run the seatbelt around the strap. And we should be good to, uh, yeah, run the seatbelt around. We should be good to store some, some wings on there. Not bad for a few hours work. Another gusset, triangle gussets on the end. And we're good to go. Oh boy, righto, a few hours. Uh, I think we're ready to throw a wing in that. It ended up wider for some reason. I think I just got lazy. I forgot to cut those legs. They were already sort of 900 or something. Um, or well, maybe it looks like they should have been 900 and I think they're 1200s. That's okay. That wing, that wing, and the wing on the floor will go in the rack. Everything's on wheels. If you're going to build, put everything on wheels. My engine over there is on wheels. Now I think what I'll try and do, they're actually pretty high if you look, the wings in the rack, compared to cruiser is what I'm getting at. If they fit under the wing over there, it'd be great against the wall. Um, I've got a good table over here, my sort of upholstery table or soft table if you like, uh, carpeted table. Used to be fantastic for the model aeroplanes, covering on there with like doing my solar film and stuff like that on there was really good. Built quite a few aer model aeroplanes on that, so I might clean this up. Yeah, the engine mount can go in the cowl and the tank, put all that under the bench. The axles will go, go on the aircraft, I'll fit the wheels and we'll bring that should use that table 
we'll get it out here just to store stuff um, and work on um, the fuselage. Fuselage will come, you know, to the front. I'm going to work on that now. Pull the, I'll pull the um, struts, however, off the... I might do that now. Pull the struts off the centre wing. Complete that job. Okay, with the alarm almost about to go off to do school pickup. Got the wing centre section there with the cabanes uh, off. Built my other wing rack. Fantastic. It's on wheels. So, obviously, I can just move these to wherever I want. I'll put the wings against each side of the hanger, clear out that side like I said, get the fuselage out and start work on that. Uh, the tail's going to come off unfortunately, but gives me plenty of space in the hanger to swing things around. There's a tail on the, on the camel, looking good. Tail will hang back on the wall there. I made my wing rack. I didn't cut one bit of timber. I just unscrewed all of these and basically screwed it together in a different format. So that turned out really well. New bit of seatbelt and away you go. Plenty of room. Plenty of room to get the cruiser out and go for a fly. I've worked out that this centre section I'm going to hang it on the wall off that horizontal and it'll fit down there in that section there hang it in there just run a I'm going to run a tie down strap through the leading edge through that leading edge tube tie down strap straight through there hang it up out of the way and we'll get to building the fuselage all right guys quick that was a quick wrap up of this week got plenty done pulled the aircraft apart no damage I'm really happy with how that how things have turned out like I said, heaps of space here now. Um, whoever, comes, whoever comes in the hangar next is going to get a bit of a shock because we've basically pulled the aircraft apart. It's progress in the right direction. So I'm going to start, it's probably the, maybe it's the hump, I don't know. Um, one day it's all going to go back together when it's nicely painted. Look forward to that day. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.